So, this is one of those oh dear moments. Come this way. We've compression tested the engine because I've not been sure about it. And if I can bring you to cylinder number three, all right, down in the bottom, you can probably see some rings running around just above the piston, two of them. Turns out the block is cracked. So today's challenge, how do we do a complete engine change for as close to zero money as possible? Let's see if we can do it at break even. So first requirement is a replacement engine. One visit to eBay later. And here we are. Kind of hard to see in the light, apologies. But that's one 225 horsepower BAM engine, correct for this car. He even threw in a gearbox as well. It was advertised as having 150,000 miles on it. So we should be good. And then in the back there you can see an engine crane that I've borrowed from a friend which we're going to need to do this job with. Lost a bit of oil out the turbo return pipe. That's remarkably clean looking. Suggests the engine's been well looked after. Now that we've got an engine to go in, I guess we'd best get on with getting the old one out. Cue lots of speeded up footage and a brass band. Just go with it, it's easier. Now this is what we call teamwork. There are three of us here. There's me dragging stuff out of the way of the engine, Julia driving the crane, and the engine block busy snagging on everything it possibly can. I should add that what you're seeing is actually not sensible. You can't split this engine and box in the engine bay unless you strip absolutely everything off the block. I won't mention exactly when I realised this. The old engine block was filthy, but it was absolutely nothing by comparison with the gearbox, which looked quite a lot like the swamp thing. The angle grinder, of course, and a wire wheel did an excellent job, and then I looked quite a lot like the swamp thing instead. Next up, do we need this bit? I don't think we need this bit. Let's get rid of this. At the moment the radiator's just hanging in space, but I think we can do a better job of making a home for it if we chop this piece out first. And chopping stuff always feels good, so we don't really need an excuse. Time to go back to impersonating the Keystone Cops. Uh, ask someone off of the 1920s. Actually, that's probably not a terribly practical suggestion. So we can get the radiator and intercooler out of the way and give ourselves half a chance of swinging the engine and gearbox in. The goal here is to create enough space to fit the power plant over the front bumper and various remaining pipes and hoses, then somehow manoeuvre it into position around the passenger side engine mount, because said mount is a right pain to remove. This is one of those times where you're not sure if you're saving yourself hassle or creating more of it. A bit more high speed spanner twirling and there goes the intercooler. And now what we've got is a mysterious spaghetti of pipes and wires, all of which are very important and hence best flopped all over the engine bay in a carefully judged tangle so as to give maximum opportunity for brain training when the time comes to put it all back together. So starting from the sump end, normally you'd have your power steering pump here, aircon compressor just here, alternator up here. We haven't got any of that. And the reason for doing that, also no inlet manifold. And down here, no exhaust manifold. It's because a complete engine goes for 350, 400, 500 pounds. A bare engine, well this one's about half that. And we've already got a good set of accessories. So no point paying the extra really. At the same time you might ask if it's only the block that's bad, why didn't you just buy a short block? You've got a good head. Well, I could do that and yeah it's cheaper. But then you've got to buy a head gasket kit, and they're £100 on their own. And then you've got to spend for the head gasket bolts. Better to buy a whole engine, and then I can sell the head, the, the good head that I've got in the garage that I don't need anymore. Now the new engine has been magically bolted to the much cleaner gearbox. Yes, it is the original gearbox, and I think it's probably a kilo or so lighter without the oily spludge and we're going to lob it into the engine bay with the speed and skill of consummate professionals. Uh, just as soon as we can manoeuvre it past the garage door. Well, it clearly won't go up any further where it is. What if we just uh, charge? I'll be honest, that worked better than expected. Now we're going to thread the needle and manoeuvre a wide power unit into a narrow engine bay. To complicate matters, I'm going to do it while wearing overly baggy jeans, so we'll be attempting to lower the engine while raising my trousers and not the other way around. 
It's a difficult form of multitasking. Cautious and carefully judged actions are the way forward here. And then we had one of those... Duh... moments. Because the bonnet doesn't open any wider. Not too hard to figure out what comes next. But no, not the angle grinder. I didn't think of that. No, really I didn't. The bonnet's only held on with two bolts on each side, so it was easiest just to stash it over the back of the car somewhere while we got on with the rest of the job. From here it was really just a process of lower it a bit, shout at it a bit, lower it some more, shove it, shout at it again, and it gradually made its way into the engine bay. I won't show you us bolting it under the mounts as frankly there are more interesting things to do in life so we'll just cut to a shot of it sitting in position instead. Er, uh, now. Nobody needs to see that. So, important question then. Did we make the cost target? Well, probably the best answer is not yet. So we spent 200 on an engine and then another 20 pounds on gaskets and got a new alternator belt here because we've, you can see down there, there should be an air conditioning pump there. That's gone. So the belt's a different shape. So that's 220 in so far. We sold the old cylinder head for, I think, £120. Got another 20 for the old cam cover. Still got a gearbox here to sell. Got a sump to go as well. These go for about £20. Gearbox for about 50 The crank, they don't sell terribly often, but when they do, they fetch about £80 at a time. And mm, there's some bearing caps here. They go for about 30 for a set, although whether anyone will really want them is debatable. So we've still got a few things to get. Need to get some oil, need to get some coolant. But if we don't end up with a final target below £100, I'll be really quite surprised. Which is clearly better by a wide margin than paying anyone else to do it. And you get to learn all the ins and outs of the engine and all its plumbing and all of the ways it can bite you as well. It's um, character building. I think that's the word. It's character building. So, after a fair few trials and tribulations, here's where I think we'll stop for this week. The engine is in. It's on its own mount. It's hooked up to the gearbox. Most of it's connected up. Not all of it. Small matter of an inlet manifold to go on. Down the back, someone appears to have stuffed a tea towel in the turbo. The other things still need doing. Well, that rounds things out for this week. If you've enjoyed watching, please like and subscribe and we'll get it running in part two. Or blow it up, one or the other.